Hello, and welcome to the show Gold Squadron Gays. It's the podcast where two Star Wars loving gays break down each episode of their favorite Star Wars TV shows while also being gay as hell. I'm your host, Bradley Brower. I'm your other host, Charles Rogers, and my whole body is falling apart, and I didn't even go to celebration this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Yeah, we didn't glad- even have to spend the money to do feel Exactly. I got I got to have my back break for free. Mm, uh, I like that. Yeah, I, I strained a, a muscle or something in my back, and now I have these like horrible spasms when I try to get up. So I'm I'm wearing like an icy hot pack. I feel like I've been to a convention for four days. Right. When in actuality, I was just in my apartment uh, reading Twitter. That was how I spent my Star Wars celebration. <laughs> Although I will say, I will say at the top of the show, uh, the MVP for me this year uh, for Star Wars Celebration was Bradley. Mm, okay. Because because Bradley was on top of it with the panels. Because he, if you don't know, if, if you just joined us recently, uh, Bradley is on Eastern time. I am on Pacific time. He is a full solid three hours ahead of me. Uh, so he was actually up to see some of these panels. Right. So, as much as I could, yeah. As much as he could. So I would wake up and the first thing I would check was our text message thread to where he would put all of the info he thought was relevant for me. So other than the Ahsoka panel, I think you had most of the others covered for me in the morning when I woke up. Right. I pretty much anything that was on the actual main stage that they showed on the live stream, I was able to kind of go back and watch real quick, or I was able to like fast forward through the breaks or the little interviews or whatever, like just to the relevant stuff or the main points at least. And so I like, for example, I did not have access to anything that was shown behind closed doors, unfortunately. Right. Um, well, but you know, silly stuff. we did not have access to any of that stuff. Yes, of course. We've obviously uh, seen it, but like, right, right we didn't right, right. watch it on the, the neither of us watched it on the stream of course not oh my gosh do you remember I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna deliver some gold squadron gaze deep lore do you remember what i used to call uh jumping on the grenade when it came to you no <laughs> this was around the time the lead up to rise of skywalker so this was when we were like before we had conceptualized the podcast is that every time something would come out about Mando season one or Rise of Skywalker or something, you would message me and I would just scream at you. Because I used to call it <laughs> jumping on the grenade that whenever there was a new Star Wars thing that was announced, Bradley would be like one of the first people to message me. So he would get the brunt of my reaction <laughs> and the rest of the world didn't have to deal with it. And now we have a moderately well-reviewed podcast that's been on for two years there you go it's the only way we know how to get our frustrations out is to it talk truly about it here. Is. truly is oh my gosh yeah it's a bit of gold squadron gaze deep lore for you it's part of where like the podcast it. came from well do we want to we're doing a celebration bonus episode uh just us this time uh because th- there's too much stuff in here for the beginning right. of, of one episode <laughs> oh lord uh well, I guess do we want to dump, jump on the major things that we had decided we were going to talk about? Because there's too much for us to cover everything. Right. Yeah. Like if this was like a if we were a really serious podcast or we really wanted to go into this, we would have a Which different episode. Not. We would have we're, a different we're episode. We're two homosexuals with microphones. Like, <laughs> right. Don't expect too much from us. No, this is a very pared down uh, bonus episode for you all. Just kind of summarize some of the things just so we can give our kind of first thoughts on them. And then, you know, like I said, if we were a better podcast you know we'd have every episode for every day of celebration yep. and if we were you know, a better podcast we would have gone to celebration well that too yeah uh come, we definitely would hell or high water well i'm gonna complain about this again because i will continue to complain about this from now until the end of time is that the reason i didn't go to celebration london despite having the money i had the money to do it is I went on to Ticketmaster or wherever was doing the tickets and I literally had the four day pass in my cart and between entering the page where you selected the four and it's because I hovered for like an extra two seconds over the lanyard deciding whether or not I wanted the lanyard. When I went to go (laughs) click on the checkout box, it was like all four have sold out and I'm like, well, I'm not buying day passes. I don't have the money for that and the airfare. So fuck it. I guess I'm not going. (laughs) I mean, I'm probably going to the next one but we can cover that at the end of the podcast okay right yeah we can talk about that uh, and that was that was why 
I, I personally think that Congress needs to investigate Ticketmaster. Uh, and I am personally glad that Taylor Swift convinced everyone else of a thing that I was already saying. I like that. I like Basically, that. Basically, I influence. was right as usual. You had that influence over her. I did. I did. I <laughs> called Taylor up and I said, hey, Taylor, I had this annoying thing with the ticket service. Uh, you should really look into this. There you uh, go. Fortunately, she's fixed everything forever. <laughs> Of course she has. <laughs> of course she has. Um, so do we want to dive into just some of the things that we specifically highlighted we wanted to talk about it that were revealed at Celebration this year? Let's do it. All righty. First up is the Ahsoka trailer. They did get to, and we did get to watch the, the actual version at home. Right. They did release this one to the public. Thank God. <laughs> now they showed a slightly different one in- at the Celebration panel. At the or Celebration at the panel, yeah. And I'm not going to, did you see that one, Brad? Did you I I did uh not necessarily like with my permission um thanks to TikTok uh oh. I I saw I saw it so many times on TikTok yeah. that I just I just said fuck it and I just went on Reddit and I typed in you know leak trailer Fucking or whatever Christ. and I just found it and I just watched Fucking it because Christ and like the I mean there's really only I'm we're not gonna talk about what was in the leak trailer but right. the two things that were in it were the only two things people were talking about on TikTok so I was like I'm not gonna like I'm just gonna go ahead and watch it because it's really not that different of a trailer it's just those two a bonus things that they had in there really and that was about it yeah and like those are cool but there's so much in the actual trailer that i want to talk about like right fucking oh my god chopper is there that's <laughs> rad they're uh, all here <laughs> they're, they're here uh kanan's not well we kanan's that. not here uh have you seen those uh images of like live action side by sides and it's like all of them and then it gets to kanan and it either has like a picture of ash for like a brain <laughs> oh, that's so sad <laughs> Oh my god. That's uh, really sad. Uh yeah, Professor Hu Yang is here. Did you recognize who that was? Uh no, definitely not. No, you had I, to go yeah. look that up. Yeah, I definitely did. Well, I saw like an article or something about David Tennant returns as blah 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 right. blah. And I was like, David Tennant's in Ahsoka. Yeah. I mean, as David what? Tennant's and then I look. <laughs> well, David Tennant was in uh in the Clone Wars and won an Emmy for his performance as Hu Yang in the Clone right. Wars. I suspected because a while back in Ahsoka Lego set leak, the Ahsoka shuttle, and it was oh. Ahsoka. Sabine and Hu Yang. And I was like, is Hu Yang gonna be in the, the Ahsoka show? And yes, I guess. Um Yeah, because that's a pretty random set of that's characters a, for that a, was a, a random Lego character yeah. to include in that well it's like clone wars used to do that is they'd have like two characters that made sense for the set and then one random character that was just kind of uh, there okay. gotcha. and it's like okay uh sure jan <laughs> you know who else is in in the trailer you know who else is in the ahsoka trailer who's in the ahsoka trailer <laughs> it's fucking mon mothma chancellor mon mothma's here i fucking I saw that on Twitter first before I had the chance to watch the trailer. I fucking screamed. Really? I was sitting in my car watching it, I screamed out loud. I was so I was like, oh my god! Who, who would Mon guess that Charles in this? would scream about Mon who, Mon Mon. who who would have thought that the guy who was on an hour and a half fucking episode of Fulcrum Transmissions, which you should absolutely listen to, uh, would have a reaction to seeing Mon Mothma is gonna be in the Ahsoka show. And you know what's gonna be weird about that too is we're seeing we just saw Mon Mothma in Andor season one. Now we're going to jump to the future, essentially, and see Mon Mothma in Ahsoka. And then we're going to go back again in the past and see her in Andor season two. So that's going to be such stands, a weird we character. We are fed. We are fed <laughs> at long last. They are giving us the Mon Mothma content. Finally. Oh my God. It's been fucking 40 years. Give us. <laughs> it literally has been 40 years. It's, it's the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Jedi. Oh, it's been 40 go. years more mon mothma oh my god i'm i'm trying to figure out which event i'm gonna go to i'm probably gonna go to the one at the hollywood bowl where mm -hmm. they have the okay. orchestration over it i will probably cry oh. uh when i see her that's on cool screen. yeah i think chris mentioned they were doing something where they were they were having the orchestra play the score under oh. uh the film as it's being shown uh or i'll see it in theaters and then again probably cry yeah i guess i might go do that i might go see the return of the jedi in theaters because that that 
that is kind of an interesting that's one of my well that is my favorite of the for a long time trilogy. for a long yeah. time it was my favorite star wars movie yeah me too up until last jedi came out it it's still in my top three like i fucking love that movie i used to be able to quote the luke and vader fight when i was like six or seven years old word for <laughs> word like i was obsessed with that movie oh, so good. you know who else is in the mon mothma scene and, and this doesn't matter to you at all because you didn't get far enough to meet him do you do you know about this bradley the who one of the senators is the i did send i think i sent you that i uh, think you did send me I so i think you know you, yeah for the benefit of our audience uh one of the senators uh who is there is senator ziono that is kazuda ziono protagonist of star wars resistance's father uh so we are getting a resistance reference which wow. i think is neat um, he does show up briefly in Resistance, although sadly Resistance was rushed to its ending uh, before he got... He gets like two scenes. He's like, we see him in a hologram in one in season two, and we see him, uh, we hear his voice in the first season. Gotcha. Um, but I'm delighted to see a, a reference to Resistance, which is awesome. Is it, do we know if it's the same voice actor slash actor playing the I don't same think character? so. I don't think it's the no? same guy. Oh, okay. But I it's the same character. We know it's the same it's character. It's the same character. It's it. the same character. Uh, he's a New Republic senator, but it's it's not the same guy. Got it. Okay. I'm sure when we cover Ahsoka, uh, which almost certainly you and I will have to do by ourselves, I... I'm sort of making the executive decision that rather like Obi-Wan <sighs> Kenobi, there's just going to be too much in this show. I, I mean, honestly, th just from this trailer alone, I was like, God, these are going to be two to three hour episodes that we're going to cover. Every, like if, if Ahsoka is only 45 minutes long, we're going to be spending two hours for every 45 minutes. Like I just well, don't understand. Remember, remember the, the episode, the Jedi was like 45 minutes and we spent two and a half hours on it when we did Mando season two. That was our, preview. that was one where we were, that was one. Where, <laughs> I think we said at the end of that episode is like, this is going to be a preview for the Ahsoka show. Yeah, it really was. Now you need, to, what you need to do, Bradley is you need to go back and binge watch rebels. I know. You need to I, go back and binge watch Rebels. Have, have to, but it's like, I don't have enough time to do that. There's it's, too many it's episodes. It's not as long. It's not as long as you think it is. It's a easy 50 episodes. It, yeah, it's, it's yeah, exactly something 50. like 50. Well, it has an abbreviated uh, first and final, first and fourth season. So it's not gotcha. like Clone Wars where there's 133 episodes. Yeah, but it's still 50 episodes that I have to watch. Like I bet you lot. could do it. I bet you could do it. I'm sure I could if I like genuinely tried. I'm sure I could do it, but you know, oh, me. I'm I sure, don't like to do that. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh well then you're gonna have to sit there while i patiently explain things to you <laughs> i was gonna say you know what but that's good because it gives those who maybe didn't watch rebels some context when that we is, go over that it. would be interesting actually i you know what i actually agree with you i think you not re-watching rebels because you've obviously seen it like you know what's in it you not re-watching it before watching ahsoka because i just re-watched it like about a year ago right yeah and i know first steps and dark side divas are both currently covering which i was actually just watching a live stream of dark side divas and first steps all five of them on one screen which was oh, incredibly chaotic <laughs> Uh, they had nothing but nice things to say about you. Aw, well, <laughs> damn, but not nice enough for them to invite us. Uh, I was in the chat. Uh, <laughs> you're not on you're not on Twitter and you're not in their discord. That's true. Uh, which was the places you would have known. I've also been on Divas Unleashed mm. and Steph will be on. Uh, Steph has already revealed, so I feel oh. comfortable revealing. Steph is going to be on one of our Mando season three episodes. I'm very excited to have. Her oh, on. nice. Yes. Uh, so shout out to both First Steps and Dark Side Divas who are both covering Star Wars Rebels right now. So if you want to go back and watch There's along with someone to Rebels to at least the first season, because both Steph and Chris are midway through the first season, they've had to stop um, because real life stuff um, <laughs> real life real life um first steps has done the entire first season they're about to start season two so nice. there you go there's some rewatch podcasts for you you can also go back to j guys and jedi who did rebels several years ago there you go there's some rebels podcasts for you to catch you up perfect we cannot keep talking about this ahsoka trailer no, we can't uh, if, it'll if take if i too get long. in if i get into fucking ray stevenson's character call well, me 
Balin, I don't care how much of the bad guy you are. Call me. I'm available. I was going to say, we'll get, uh, for those at home, we'll get more into the Ahsoka trailer once we do our Ahsoka do episode, our Ahsoka episode zero. zero. We'll yes. do a true breakdown of everything we saw, but this was just a few you things. You will have seen more. You know. I, I, I will say my final thought is that I'm so glad Morgan Elspeth is in this. She is one of the most interesting characters to come out of The Mandalorian, and I am delighted she's going to get a chance to shine. Yeah, I'm excited to see her. I'm actually, I really, for me, I'm not going to go too much into the trailer, but for me, I'm more curious about these two new lightsaber wielding characters. I, we, I can't call them bad guys so, or Sith or I anything because we don't know. I think we know... They've said that Balon, at least, who's Ray Stevenson's character, is a former Jedi. Other than that, Dave Filoni has been tight-lipped on everything else. Gotcha. And then the other character, I cannot for the life of me remember the actress's name. I'm so sorry. We will know it in our episode yeah, zero. Well, once we get there, yeah. Uh, her character, Shin Hati, uh, we know nothing about this character. Right. Uh, except that she straight up murders uh, <laughs> the crew of a New Republic ship. Right. Uh, which... I'm I'm down. God, we gotta stop talking about. I this know, trailer. I know. We gotta we'll, stop we'll talking about this trailer. We'll keep going into it forever. Moving speaking, on. Speaking speaking of badass lightsaber things, um, my most anticipated show ever in the history of the universe, uh, the Acolyte, also got a trailer and a hell of an announcement. Oh wow. my God! Everything we saw from the Acolyte or heard from the Acolyte, I'm like, holy shit! This fucking show. So I purposefully went out of my way to not watch the Acolyte leaked trailer. I 100% watched it. Or I watched <laughs> every video I could find was only the first minute of the trailer. Really? Uh, so okay. I've only watched the first minute, but oh my God. Oh my yeah. fucking God. I'm so ready for this show. And I haven't even oh seen it. Oh my Lord. <laughs> yeah, just everything about it. It's Frozen meets Kill Bill. Who it's doesn't love that? So many people with lightsabers. <laughs> it's about like how the Sith worm their way back in and like how the Jedi go from the idealistic Jedi of the High Republic to the Jedi we see in the prequels. And Leslie Headland clearly knows her stuff. Like right. every interview was like, yes, this is a person who knows. And then like for me, the big thing was the reveal, not at the celebration main stage, but the reveal they did at the High Republic panel uh, that Rebecca Henderson is playing a character from the High Republic oh, publishing yeah. initiative. So they brought a character that was never a character that I even anticipated we would ever see in live action and is like, this character is going to be in. I'm so, so ready for this show. You have no idea. So this is now, well, I guess technologically, this is the fourth character from the High Republic to make it to the screen because if we um, count Young Jedi Adventures that technically counts as yeah. High Republic so so the only character in Young Jedi Adventures that was from the publishing initiative that we have seen so far is Yoda oh well he doesn't uh, count he doesn't really count no. uh, now I haven't they haven't released a lot for Young Jedi Adventures I have watched the trailer yeah uh, it looks like a a show for uh, literal like children Good. Um, it looks it looks fine uh, I watched it uh, my my boyfriend and I went through and watched all of the trailers together and his comment on Young Dead Eye Adventures, and I do agree with him as much as I am going to watch the show. His comment was, this does not seem like a show that adults are going to be able to get as much out of. And I'm like, okay, based on the trailer, I do kind of agree with that, but I'll watch the show and we'll see. Obviously, I'm going to watch it uh, because Nub Supremacy, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think people need to get anything out of this. I guess right. that's my my point about it is like this is they are being very obvious that guys, there there's no hidden meaning it's, it's to for any children. of the stuff in the show. Right. Yeah. It's just for kids. This isn't Gravity Falls. This isn't, you know, the Owl House. This isn't like one of those things where it's like four kids, you know. This is a truly well, like it could be a <laughs> thing. Age thing. Well, it could be a thing like Bluey, I've heard basically everyone I know that has a child. Uh, has has raved about how Bluey is like this incredible I haven't watched it but it's like this show that you look at it and you're like this is a kid show but every adult that I've heard is raved about how good it is so it is entirely possible that 
you know, the show may turn out to be the kind of thing that you could watch and be like, oh, this is really enjoyable as an adult. It doesn't have to be. And I think that's what's important is it, it clearly the way that Andor was made for adults. This is made for kids. Star Wars is for everybody. Not everything is going to be for everybody. I'm going to watch it and I am excited to watch it. It looks really cute. And frankly, the world is a dismal hellhole. And if I just get to be happy for 20 minutes watching one of these episodes, I'll take it. The Acolyte, however, very much looks like it was made for me specifically Gorge. and no one else. <laughs> oh, I, I can already tell that this is going to be the best <laughs> Star Wars show that has ever existed for the sheer fact that everything, they, every character, every actor that has come out of this so far that we've seen, like I watched that little bit where like they all came out and introduced them all like individually, like as a group. And I was like, oh my God, I love her. Oh my God, I love him. Oh my God, I love them. They're so amazing. Oh, this is what this character is playing. This character is playing this. And I was like, oh, fucking, more, more, more. Fucking <laughs> Amanda Stenberg showing up in Padme in Cosplay. I love them so Padme much. Cosplay. I love them so much. They are perfect for this role. I haven't, I know nothing about their role. I just know they're perfect for it by the fact they showed up in Padme Cosplay. That's all I need. 100%. Oh my God. And like Manny Jacinto's role apparently was written specifically for him. I love that. Like they call him and we're like, you want this part? Like, I'm so excited for this show. So and, excited for this show. And then something I wasn't expecting was they, during the panel, they talked to Daphne Keen and she didn't reveal too much about her character, but she was like, I'm not playing a human. And I was like, Night, oh. Everyone thinks Night Sister, and I'm thinking, God, I, I hope so. I think I think that's probably what it is. I'm just not sure because it's like we know nothing. <laughs> we don't know. I don't want to well, assume because I don't want to, I like, I don't want to do that with this show. I want this show to be completely like just fresh and like new and nothing thing about it i know nothing and it's gonna be like yeah. me watching rogue one again like where i didn't i walked in completely blind i want to do yeah. that with this show yeah and we'll not to spoil an upcoming gold squadron project that i've been working on for eight thousand years you'll you'll know who rebecca henderson is playing by the time we get there but other than that yeah like all of it and i think that's another thing too about it from what i've seen that looks really cool is it looks very much like a show like andor that looks like it's going to be very rewarding for somebody who has no no idea who any of these people are and also very rewarding for somebody who's like that's the guy from the thing like the, a big issue i have with the mandoverse is the mandoverse kind of leans a little bit on you have to know who some of these people are like i couldn't show the mandalorian past season one to somebody who's never seen a star wars before and not have to explain parts of it to them i would have to explain to them the show kind of tries but you really do have to explain who bo katan kreese is who luke skywalker is who ahsoka tano is like you kind of do have to know who these people are and it's gotten especially bad in season three and it, the Acolyte kind of feels like more a show that's being written with if you've consumed all of the old Sith lore from the, the old EU, like my Star Wars The Old Republic obsessed ass has, you're going to be super rewarded or you can come into the show having never seen a Star Wars. Which is what I like. I think that's what I like about Acolyte is that it's not going because I know nothing about the EU, right? And I know nothing about that stuff. Only However, what you've grudgingly learned on this show against <laughs> right. your will. However, watching this or like just learning about this, I'm just like, this is what that's going to be for me, like me, at least like it's going to be like, oh, they're going to take hella stuff from these these EU stuff. And they're going to be like, hey, did you read these stupid ass books as a kid? Guess what? We took that random ass. character. Did you read the there. Darth Bane trilogy? <laughs> right. If not, who fucking cares? <laughs> this crazy martial arts shit happening. Oh, oh, my God. My my final final just note on. The Acolyte is uh, Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah, when is that I, reveal coming? I, I will watch anything she is in. I love her so much. She's so good. I cannot wait for the show. When is, um? so we know that it's coming possibly next year, right? So, yeah. So Ahsoka's coming August 2023. Right. Um, thank when you, is this one coming? God, for actually giving me a release window for Ahsoka so we can goddamn plan some shit right. in the next few months. Uh. The Acolyte is coming sometime in 2024, but not August 2024. 
Right. Because that's when Andor season two is coming. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's a good transition into Andor a little bit. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I did watch the Andor trailer, but they did confirm Andor season two is wrapping up production. Okay. They expect very that around August 2024 is when they're looking to release it, which once again, bless Andor for being the only Star Wars show that does not have time for any of this bullshit. <laughs> it's just, yeah, here we are. Here's when we're yep. expecting to release. Thank God. Plan accordingly. Yeah, okay. I, I miss, I wish that the other shows had that because it's so nice to know just that like. tell me oh. when you think you don't even have to be right. We can accommodate. Right. Just tell us when you think the show is going to air that so that we so can great. plan if we want to do an entire season of something in between or if we want to split a movie up or if we have to split a movie up and then we have to vamp on stage for like a solid <laughs> fucking month because you okay. kept pushing Andor back. Oh, God. Anyway, and or, yeah, so we know that Ahsoka, August 2023, Skeleton Crew, probably after Ahsoka. Uh, so I'm guessing Sometime, probably maybe. December 2023. I, you know, I think I, it, it makes sense that they would try to make it a holiday release uh, just based on the very little information yes. that we it know about like it. It seems like a holiday thing. I think so. Acolyte sometime in 2024, my guess is probably the March-ish release window. That's so, pretty early. Uh, well, you got to think like Skeleton Crew will go probably through december january february and then yeah maybe april march or april for yeah, acolyte well, i've probably may acolyte's may been in production for that is true we also know that in 2024 the bad batch is coming back for third and final season so number oh. one number one we called that the bad batch was coming back for a third and final and we called that it was the final season number right. two we called that they were going to reveal that at the panel number three we called that Finnick shand was going to be back oh there you go so we got a lot of things right so and they also said some Somebody else I can't remember was going to come back, but Finnick Shand was the important one uh, that I identified as is coming back uh, Which... because it was one we had specifically said, I think she's going to come back. So Fennec Shan comes back. So that possibly means that they may be trying. I mean, not only are they working in, you know, the Bad Batch kind of storyline with Fennec Shan, but possibly Boba Fett season two, maybe at some point. Uh, I hope so. I've heard now I've heard they did screen this episode of The Mandalorian that's going to premiere tonight as a recording this. We're recording this on Tuesday. Oh, shit. That's uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tomorrow. That's tonight. Yeah, yeah. Tonight. Well, yeah. for you, it will be tomorrow. For me, it's tomorrow. For you, it will be tomorrow morning. <laughs> for me, it will right. be midnight tonight. Gotcha. Uh, because they did show it at Celebration. Uh, uh, and okay. I have heard Rick Famuyiwa, who's a producer, did say that they were going to tie up everything in Mando so far and also Book of Boba Fett. But yeah, I do hope there will be a Book of Boba Fett season two. Yeah, because I, I do honestly... think it desperately needs one i think that the way that they have structured everything so far i it would make sense to do it i think it just it, like the way that the order seems to be going would be mando 3 would wrap up then ahsoka is going to come through skeleton crew is going to bookend that and then that would either lead us into mando 4 or book of boba 2 it's one of the two that you could theoretically do uh, by the way, I am trying to desperately find who else is going to return, and the only articles I can find summarizing the Bad Batch panel, the people that are returning were revealed in the trailer, which we're not going to talk about. Oh, uh, okay. Well, then there you go. Fin we know Finnick Shand is coming back. Got it. Okay. I mean, I'm. I mean, we. We yeah, we figured that anyway. So I'm. I'm glad. Uh, you know who else is coming back? Good transition. <laughs> it's. It's. It's the products and services that support this podcast because we've been talking long enough to necessitate an ad break. <laughs> How much do you hate me right now? And we're back. Uh, so Phoenix Shan's back. The products and services that support this podcast oh are back. God. And uh, you know who else is back? Who is back? Uh, just a little character that popped up in a couple of films. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard this one. It's a pretty obscure Star Wars character. Uh, she was kind of in the background of a couple of movies. Um, Rey Skywalker. Huh, strange. I, I feel like I remember that, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they announced on the main stage uh, that there's going to be a new Jedi Order film uh, starring Daisy Ridley. That's the film that Damon uh, Lenendorf was apparently working on. Uh, and Stephen Knight has now taken over the screenplay for that. They have a director attached. They have Daisy Ridley back. Uh, it is it is still in development, but it's coming right. up on the end of development. Um, okay. So that easily is the film that I'm the most excited about that they announced. Yeah, you know, because it, it just, well, one, it riles up the Toxic Fanboys. Oh, yeah, we Fuck love. Them. They're loose. No, they lost their goddamn mind. There was a guy on Twitter. This was so fucking.
fucking funny. There was a guy on Twitter who posted something like, uh, nobody clapped when Kathleen Kennedy came out and Daisy Ridley only got like a weak smattering of applause. The quote tweets are full of people who were in the room being like, dude, that's a fucking lie. Right. Like I was outside. You could hear the screaming when <laughs> Daisy Ridley came out from outside the room. So right. it's just quote tweet after quote tweet of people dunking on this guy. And I'm like, yeah, it's so fucking nice. funny. They do not know how to handle this. Like they thought the sequel trilogy was going to be decanonized hasn't yep. happened they thought that kathleen kennedy was going to step down like three years ago hasn't happened they don't know how to process this it's kind yeah. of hilarious they're well first of all they're stupid as fuck they Second are of all, incredibly stupid however i do like the idea that if she wanted to retire the indiana five would be like a great and bookend to her career like i don't know i just think that's a like whole a separate nice that's a whole separate thing i do i think my tldr version is i think that kathleen kennedy will retire whenever Kathleen Kennedy wants to retire and when right. she determines that she wants to retire right. I will have nothing but praise for her for her tenure not only as the president of Lucasfilm but as a legendary producer who made some of the formative movies of my life back to but the Ray talk, Skywalker I was gonna say, movie let's talk about this movie <laughs> producing yeah um this has a lot of implications for not only the Skywalker saga like the the new Skywalker movies um but also the fact that Kathleen Kennedy said that this movie was going to take place 15 years after Rise of Skywalker well Bradley do you want do you want some pain in your life <laughs> give it to do me do you want to do you want to hurt because once again we we met the year that Force Awakens came out. Like, you put the Force Awakens up on the trailer in our history of TV class. And then I cried, but you never knew that because I was yes. sitting up in the back. <laughs> uh, yeah. If this movie releases in 2025, right? Which is unlikely. It's 2023 now. If this movie releases in 2025, it will be 10 years since The Force Awakens came out. Wow. That sounds just about right. Mm -hmm. And I... I I don't I actually don't I don't know if this one's going to come out in 2025. So it'd be a really fast turnaround for the movie. Yeah, I I don't think so. I think because it's in development now, it's 2023. It's if it if it's in development now, I I don't know. I'm I I say they would be in production for at least a year just to make they make may, it, you know, decent. They may also be further in pre-production than they're letting on. Like it's entirely possible that they are further along than we know. It's right. hard to say because Dave Filoni has has said and we'll get to him in a minute another movie is about five to seven years out right from arriving so the the current reigning theory up until celebration weekend the theory had been that taika waititi's film was going to be the 2025 movie because they still have 2025 listed on their production schedule that they intend a star wars movie to come out then so we thought it might be right. taika waititi's movie but then didn't kathleen say something recently she's still she writing like, it uh, at yeah, celebration he's, he's she still... gave an interview he's still writing right. it they're leaving okay. him alone to write it because he has Good. his own process and they don't want Right. mess with his voice but yeah ray skywalker movie could not be more excited for that i also yeah. love that it's a standalone that they're not trying to do another trilogy such a good idea like because Kath then then they can spin it off to however many movies they want right and that's what kathleen said in it i was watching another interview that she said where she was like yeah we're not planning this as a trilogy this is just going to be its own thing and then if it naturally grows into one or two or three or four movies or a tv show spinoff or whatever then that's what's going to happen and that is the smartest way that you can do the star wars stuff now because just like mandalorian it was a standalone idea and then it just kind of slowly grew to three fucking seasons like you didn't know it was going to be this good three fucking seasons two spinoffs and a movie which leads us into the which next segues us into. i do have to say before we segue into dave filoni's movie yeah uh I do have to give my earnest plea to Lucasfilm. Please give large bags of money to, in particular, John Boyega and mm. Kelly Marie Tran to at least do cameos right. in the film. Please. Uh, because those are the two people who deserve the biggest bags of money. Uh, I think that Lucasfilm should cut John Boyega and uh, Kelly Marie Tran just checks yearly for the rest of their lives for everything they had to put up with during the sequels. So right. at least get the 
those two in to be in like one scene, pay them, you know, a couple million dollars to be in one scene. They deserve it. Um, I, I definitely agree with you there, I, especially uh, for me, especially I, I well, see. I think they both equally deserve. I think the same they thing. both yeah, equally got they, shit. Well, for different reasons, they got for different shit. reasons. So, but yes, yeah. the two people I think who who deserve the most to get large checks from Lucasfilm for doing 100%. virtually nothing for the rest of their lives are John Boyega and Kelly Marie Tran. A hundred percent. Although I would not, not, yeah, I would not say no to giving Oscar Isaac, uh, paying off his mortgage and getting him in one scene uh uh i think they're fine they gave him his own marvel character i think they he's did okay. give him his own marvel character i think he's okay god moon knight was so fucking good they need to they need to do a season two for that i i do not give a shit this is my hot take i do not give a shit about the marvel movies at this point no yeah like i have crashed so hard from oh i care about this so much to i could not possibly be bothered <laughs> Like I'm, I'm gonna only see the ones that I care. I'm gonna go see the Marvels most likely. But that actually, I just saw the trailer for that. It looks really cute. It, it looks so good. It looks yeah, so I liked good. it. I thought it was good. Yeah. But then again, I also do not care. Like I so do not I'm care. Like, I'm like, when it comes out, it comes out, and maybe I'll see it, and maybe I won't. But that's why I pay a hundred dollars a year to have Disney Plus. So there you go. Exactly. Uh, speaking of Disney Plus and the shows they're in, uh, they did reveal that I have been correct for the past two years. I have been saying this for fucking ever. Have I not? Have I not been saying this, Bradley? That they are going to culminate the Mando stuff. Their big crossover is going to be a movie. Which was not my first thought at all. Um, And so when they said that, I was like, oh. oh. The minute, the minute in 2020 they announced it's culminating in a big crossover yeah. thing. Did I not turn to you and say, that's going to be a movie. They're building up to a movie. Yeah, because it's weird because we thought they were going to, I mean, well, I definitely thought they were going to do, I'll speak for myself. I thought they were going to do more of a Defenders style show show where they just got the characters from each spinoff show and then had a separate show that all of them are in together and just called it something else even though it's I, really the mandalorian season four but they're just going to call it something else well now they've said that it's going to be <laughs> five to seven years before i was going to say get the now who, who knows when it's going to be now but yeah. yes um dave filoni is going to direct his first live action feature film wow. it's going to be loosely their version of heir to the empire uh and it's going to culminate uh the war between the new republic and the imperial remnant wow uh which i i'm excited to see it i'm kind of curious how it's gonna work right because it's the point of reference that i have is infinity war to where <laughs> it's the only reference we have well so it's infinity war and avengers and i don't like giving praise to avengers right. uh, because the director of the avengers is a piece of shit and i hate him and i also have soured on that movie over the past few years uh super hot take i'm not that wild about the first avengers movie anymore uh yeah. but one of the things that worked really well about the avengers movie is that you could come into the avengers movie and not have watched any of the previous movies and this is where i think marvel failed with infinity war and endgame is i think oh, yeah. that the problem that marvel did is by rewarding people who had seen all of the previous movies so directly in infinity war and endgame like they did they kind of set the expectation that you had to watch all of the Marvel content. And I think that is the issue that we have run into with Marvel right now, with them putting out so much content with all the TV shows and all the movies and everything that people feel like they need to watch, even if they're not super hyped about it. I think what works so well for Star Wars is that you don't have to watch every single thing. Shout out to my buddy who only has watched Andor, loves Andor, has a Cassian Andor cosplay, not even seen Rogue one does not care to watch the movies i i feel like where star wars works is there and my concern with the sort of heir to the empire movie is whether it'll be more like the avengers where you can watch it and not know who any of these people are and it will basically tell you now hopefully it's not like the avengers in that they're completely different characters because the writer has his own personal weird opinions about masculinity that he feels he needs to inflict on steve rogers and tony stark contrasting with their previously established characters but we don't have time to get into that or it's going to be like infinity war where you basically have to have seen all of the mandoverse i worry it's going to be like mando season three where people skipped book of boba fett and they didn't know what was going on but on a much larger scale yeah definitely the problem that mando has right now which is the same problem the movie's going to have is if you have not seen all seven seasons of mandalorian and all four seasons of ahsoka and all three seasons of
episodes of Book of Boba Fett and I don't even know what else, uh, two episodes of Skeleton Crew or whatever. Like you're not going to know what's going on in this Mandalorian movie at all. That's my worry is yeah, that it's, it's yeah, going it's to gonna happen. Come out and it's going to be like 100% it's going to happen. Yeah, that that is my concern. Yeah, that, um, this that's I, I'm not, we that's don't even have to pretend concern. like that's not what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Now, I will say that is my only concern. Um, now I have every faith. You know what I kind of you know what my toxic trait, my hot take is about this movie? <laughs> what? I want Dave Filoni to imitate the directing style of George Lucas in the prequels. I want shot reverse shot out the ass. I want horrible, weird transitions. No oh God. I want massive green screens. I want this man to be like, oh, y'all say you like the prequels now. Right. Let's put that to the test. No, I, I hope it's very like, I, I like the idea that it connects to the shows. However, I worry that if they do too much not connecting, like they're going to have to reintroduce all these characters in the beginning of the movie, which I don't want them to do. I don't want them to go like, oh, do you know who the Mandalorian is? If you don't, here's a 30 minute explanation of who the Mandalorian is. Like, I don't want them to do that either. So it's very like, they got to find a nice balance of introducing the characters, but not dwelling on the characters right. too much. You know, you gotta, you gotta be able to come in, know who they are and you have to Force Awakens it. Force Awakens did a really good job with this to where you don't necessarily have to know who Luke, Leia, and Han are because the film will tell you why they are important. The opening crawl, Luke is the last Jedi. Soon we know what a Jedi is. Luke is the last one. He is whatever this thing is. Everybody wants to get him. Uh, Han Solo shows up. He is smuggling things. That is all you need to know about Han Solo. He smuggles things. Leia is General Leia Organa. Everyone respects her. She commands the room. That is all you need to know about her to enjoy this movie. But if you have watched the original trilogy, you have much more context as to who Luke, Han, and Leia are and why they are so important. And that's sort of my hope with it is that they're they're going to approach in such a way it's like, here's Din Djarin. He has a baby. He is a Mandalorian. That is all you need to know. Here is Ahsoka Tano. She is a wandering Jedi. Here is her one scene of her doing a wandering Jedi thing that is cool. Moving on from there. I will say my my other uh, thing that I know will not happen, uh, I believe it was John Favreau, either John Favreau or Dave Filoni, one of them said that, so Dave Filoni has, I guess, finally realized other people write Star Wars occasionally? Because he's apparently, they have talked to Timothy Zahn, and they do intend to keep talking to Timothy Zahn after the Ahsoka show. So I'm thinking that maybe they're going to try to coordinate a little bit better with Zahn and what he's doing, and also, like, his characterization of Thrawn, we might see some some Chiss Ascendancy? We might yeah. hear about some Chiss Ascendancy? That might end up being the actual plot of Dave Filoni's movie. Well, is... he has said that it's the Imperial Remnant, so they're not fighting the Chiss Ascendancy, but like, okay. they might be mentioned. Yeah. We, we well, might see Eli Vanto. God, I hope they don't make him yeah, but, white. But just because, just because they're fighting the Remnant or whatever doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, I don't know, the Grisks are involved for no reason yeah. whatsoever. Like, we don't know. Like, well, it's you know, also so. like if if Timothy Zahn wants to write other books about what Thrawn has been up to and set them like he set them alongside rebels, it would be nice for them to communicate with each other, which... I'm curious to see what's going to result from that con those conversations. I was going to say, yeah, that could mean like that possibly if he's thinking about writing another trilogy of Thrawn books, maybe they happen alongside the Mandoverse and they that happen would be very currently. Cool. So that would be knows? very cool to have Thrawn kind of pop in and out the way. I do think they should make Eli Vanto the protagonist. That would I think Eli be should be the protagonist uh, yeah. and I think it should be happening in tandem. Uh, with yeah, what's happening. I would love to see Eli's perspective after the Empire is over because that is such like oh a, you know Eli I mean? finding like, out that the empire is over right yeah that would be such an interesting Oof. because he got sent away so now he's like oh shit there's no more empire and that doesn't you know what I mean like that would be such a, a mind fuck for him so that would be so interesting anyway we can't talk about we cannot models, possibly but... <laughs> continue talking about this um, no let's move on the the final movie that was announced is James Mangold is doing a Dawn of the Jedi movie set 25,000 years before the 
uh, original films. Uh, not gonna lie, this is the one I'm super not wild about. You know what? I think it's because we have no context for any of it. It's just the most all, out there. All he said is it's like a biblical epic. And here's here's my issue. Here's my concern. And it may be completely unfounded. My concern is the same thing with why they have been cautious not to go too far back in the publishing initiative is I, I don't want to go too far back because if you do a Star Wars film, I feel like you have to have certain things in it. Like you have to have like a certain look and feel to it. And the issue is not Knights of the Old Republic kind of ruined a lot of the EU. Hear me out, because I love Knights of the Old Republic. But they set Knights of the Old Republic like 2,000 years or something before the original trilogy. Because it was a Star Wars game, it had to have lightsabers and spaceship. And you went to Tatooine and saw Tatooine several thousand years before the events of the film. But like, you're in one of the cities that's there. And like, Tatooine looks exactly the same. And it just kind of established that the Republic is there and it's basically exactly the same. The Jedi are there. There and they're basically exactly the same. Like it established that everything was exactly the same. So everything post KOTOR had to basically have all of the same stuff that was there. And my concern is going too far back and not getting super out there with it. Like, did you ever see that film? What was it, 20,000 BC? Uh, that fucking no, weird so. movie. I want them to do that. I want them to do like fucking because 25,000 years ago in our history is like, Jesus Lord, I don't even think there's civilization 25,000 years ago <laughs> so pointless still banging okay, rocks together christ because yeah that was only it was like twelve thousand bc or something was the name of the film so i think that's about as far back as civilization goes human civilization as we know it uh look at me being terrible at history aaron could probably tell us uh, Aaron could probably tell us how far back human civilization goes, but that's my concern with the film. So I may be wrong. James Mangold may go off in a super weird direction and I may end up really loving it. Yeah, I don't have much to say on it other than I'm I'm optimistic about it, at least. I, I just don't have any context for it, so I don't really know. My concern with it is that if you go so far in the beginning and tell your essentially, like they said, biblical, you know, if you tell your Adam and Eve story for how the Jedi got started, Started, then you are pigeonholed in that story ever affecting any everything else right. that moves comes after it because then you can't change anything you can't be like well the the reason why the jedi have telekinesis is because well i just fucking told you in this movie so nope there's no other explanation like it's you know that's a very simple explanation for yeah. it but you know what i mean i do hope they keep the mystical element to the force i i, I want it to be more about the first jedi discovering the force uh, okay. more so I than like I that. want to see like what the origin I don't want to see like the origins of the force which I don't know if they mentioned that they were going to talk about the origins of the force but I, I really don't want to see that I want to see the first Jedi discovering the force or discovering the force as it exists I, I don't really want to get into too much Right. But then I do like the really weird episodes in Clone Wars where they kind of do that. So it's hard to say. I, I got to see more about the film. I got to see yeah, more. I think you're right. I think, yeah, I think we need to give it some time to breathe because who knows when it's coming. And once they've developed it more and they spent more time on the script and then we finally get either a concept more or more of a concept or an actual teaser trailer of some kind, then we can judge from there. And then that would be the way we can think uh, about it. Yeah, I, I, I feel like obligated to like cut us off at this point. Point. No, this is like, a great stopping point. Uh, yeah. Rapid, rapid fire. A uh, couple of things of interest to uh, mention, but not discuss. They announced Tales of the Jedi season two. Hopefully, the subtitle is Tales of the Jedi season two. Sorry about those last two episodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of information about the High Republic Phase 3, which is going to take place a year after Phase 1. Put a pin in that, because Bradley and I will come back to the High Republic a little bit. And also, Celebration 2025 is going to happen in Tokyo, Japan. Oh, uh, fancy. No, no, I do think the current plan is Bradley and I, we're going to try to attend. Yeah, we are. 2025. That, um, is, that, that is the tentative plan i mean the will tentative plan the this question for, the tentative plan well anaheim only i could go to london neither of us could go to with the two-year lead time the tentative plan is for both of us to go and i you know i've never been to japan
Japan. Uh, I've also never been to Japan. It would definitely be an excuse to go. That's for damn sure. That's true. <laughs> uh, I would like to see some of the, the historical sites around Tokyo, but that's a whole different podcast. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. Charles goes off on nerd history shit for 20,000 years. Now I have to I have to really cut us off for real because we were like, oh, we'll record a bonus episode and we've been recording for an hour. Yeah, great. So this I don't will think be you a can cut one. any of this. I, I know. I was going to say, this will be a fun one to try to edit down because it's Good all luck relevant with that. information. Good yeah. luck with uh, that. Uh, plugs. You can find, uh, you, you'll hear the socials at the end. Uh, but also, if you like the show, please rate us and review us on your podcasting application of choice. Uh, additionally, you can find me uh, for Light and Dice, uh, the High Republic TTRPG. And you should also, if you love trashy reality television, watch Queen's Court, now available on Peacock. Uh, I think that's all our plugs. So, Bradley, run the socials. Thank you for listening to Gold Squadron Gaze. Did Charles fuck something up? Send us a message at goldsquadrongaze at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at goldsquadgaze. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at goldsquadrongaze. Subscribe to us on YouTube at goldsquadrongaze, where we post the podcast as well as exclusive content. Please join us next week and every week for more of Gold Squadron Gaze.